Hello, everyone, and welcome to the 10 Minute Book Talk. I'm your host, Rachel Linden, and I'm joined this week by my co hosts, Marie Bostwick and Catherine Ray. And today we're talking with author Tosca Lee about her beautiful new book, The Long March Home. Tosca, we're so happy to have you with us. Welcome to the 10 Minute Book Talk. Thank and you so much for having me. Can you tell us a little bit about your book? Absolutely. So this is The Long March Home. It's out now. Um, this is the story of three best friends who enlist in the army uh, in 1941 and are sent to the Philippines. And life seems perfect and like paradise there up until Pearl Harbor is bombed. And then they are plunged immediately into war. Um, and they're fighting in the war. Uh, you may have heard of the defenders of Bataan. They end up on the Bataan Peninsula, defending the peninsula. And the following year in April uh, is, is the largest U.S. surrender in history as the Allied forces, uh, the American and Filipino forces surrendered. And what became, what happened after that became known as the Bataan Death March. And so all the, the POWs were marched 66 miles without food, without water, uh, without knowing where they were going up to a, a POW camp. And so this is the story of uh, Jimmy, who is a uh, preacher's son, his best friends, Hank and Billy, and their bid for survival during this terrible war, during this terrible march. And it's also the story of their fourth best friend, Claire, who is the girl they left behind. So that's the brief, brief in a nutshell story, um, true based on inspired by true accounts. And um, which leads me to mind, it sounds fascinating. It really does. And it sounds like the relationships are so important in this book. But, so I'm curious, where did the, your original idea came from? What was the moment you're like, yeah, no, that's that's the book. That's the story I need to write next. Tell us about it. Yeah, that's a great question. So the, the idea for this came from my co-author, Marcus Brotherton, who's probably best known for some of his World War II biographies. Uh, including, you know, the Band of Brothers. Uh, he's well known for the book uh, Voices of the Pacific. Um, and so he called me up one day and I knew him um, and I, I had endorsed his novel, Feast of Thieves. And he said, hey, listen, I, I've got this project. It's been simmering on the back burner. Um, I want to know if you want to come into it and work on this project with me. And it was this, this story about these three best friends on the Bataan Death March trying to survive. And um, I didn't know very much about the Pacific Theater in World War II. I had not heard of the Bataan Death March, um, but it sounded like a really important story to tell, and especially for people like me who had not heard of it. And so I said, yeah, let's let's do it. And he had worked on it for seven years. Um, then I had it and we worked on it together for five years. So this is over a decade in the making, this book. Wow. Wow. Yes, that's wow. That's going to lead to my question because a decade in the making means for a lot of research. And you're right. We don't know as much about the Pacific theater as we know about the European. Mm -hmm. um, and, and also you mentioned in, when you were telling us about the story about personal accounts, what yeah. was the research project like a research process? Like? Uh, yeah, it was, it was grueling. I'm not going to lie because it's the accounts are, are difficult to read. So many of the survivors of the Bataan Death March and POW life, which lasted almost four years for those who made it that long, um, it's it's hard to read. But I will say, um, and we read a lot of personal accounts. Um, many of the people who survived never talked about this time in their lives until toward the end of their lives, many of them started talking or wanted to finally tell their story. Um, so it, it was hard. It was also fascinating and it was very inspiring as well. Yeah. Mm. Uh, I'm curious that leads into mine. Um, so you're talking about Marcus having had this story that he was working on and then inviting you in how I'm always fascinated as an author. How does it work to write a book with another author? How did you yeah. guys do that? That's a great question. Um, this is my second co-authorship. I did a, a trilogy with Ted Decker several years ago, and I know a lot of co-authoring duos, uh, but as far as I can tell, every duo that writes together, that at least that I know of, they all do it differently, and even the way that Ted and I wrote our series is different than the way uh, Marcus and I wrote this book, um, so in this case, you know, Marcus had a lot of material. He had a draft, um, and so he, he was a very generous and patient and uh, open-handed co-author and said, here you go, do with it what you will. 
And I did. Um, that would not work for a lot of authors, but it worked for him. And as I was going through and adding some new things, adding a new front to the story, adding some backstory, we started passing it back and forth. And, you know, I think that the secret of a great co-author partnership is knowing the strengths that you bring to the table, very important, being willing to compromise, um, and knowing the power of prayer and humor. So those are the two things that I think are probably the well, four things. I think that's four. Not good at math. <laughs> <laughs> but those are the things that I think are most important. Yeah, oh, that's great. Lovely. <laughs> well, this story obviously meant a lot to both of you. And when you're telling us about the story, I can feel myself choking up. My, my grandfather was a POW in Stalag 17 at the age of 19. Oh, yes. And, um, you know, I, I think he was 18 for 19 months. And so it feels personal to me to hear these stories about these young men. And I'm curious, at the end of this book, when a reader closes the back cover, what are the messages that you and Marcus are hoping a reader will walk away with? Yeah, so hope and inspiration is big. This is a story of hope. It's a story of, of redemption. It's a story of friendship. A lot of the, the people in this chapter of history who survived uh, chalk their survival up to having a friend who helped look out for them. So this is a story of friendship. It's a story of brotherhood. Uh, I hope that readers walk away knowing a little more about this chapter of history, as I, I didn't know anything about it before, and a lot of people haven't heard of it. Uh, it is very personal, though, to a lot of families, because I, you know, I already I'm getting mail from people saying, I'm so glad that you're telling the story. My, my grandfather, my great uncle, my, you know, all these different relations were involved in either this or something like this. And so I hope that people leave feeling inspired, but also really grateful uh, for the sacrifices of these heroes and uh, to know a little bit more. Mm. Oh, I love that. I love it. I'm so glad you guys have chosen to tell this really important story and to tell it in a way that also is inspirational for people facing tough challenges and how we can have courage. And it's amazing to see what even two generations ago, the courage they had and the things that they were able to endure with friendship and sacrifice. And it's remarkable. So hold your book cover up again. All right, here we go. All right, there it is. It is out now. You do not have to wait go directly after you watch this interview and order this book. You will not be sorry. Order it for anyone who loves historical fiction, anyone who loves stories about sacrifice, resilience, and stories of hope. And frankly, isn't that like all of us? So I hope that you will enjoy it. Definitely go order this book. And uh, Tosca, thank you for being with us. And I want to ask the last question, which we ask every author, and that is today, what is bringing you joy? You know, uh, my, my husband just came back from a trip last night and I'm just really excited to spend time with him today. And that, that brings me joy spending time with my best friend and my husband. So, um, it's oh. a good day. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's so so wonderful. Of that time with us. We appreciate it. Uh, thank yeah, you for giving for sure. us 10 minutes of your time. And now we will let you go back and enjoy time with your husband. Tosca, thank you so much for being with us. And we hope you uh, listeners who are watching will join us again next week for more 10 minute book talk fun. See you then.